when I Let's talk it. about X-Men, then. I feel like I should let you talk about X-Men. <laughs> no, go right um, So this is the cover of Ultimate X-Men number one. And we see kind of our new team of young X-Men there. And uh, the cover to issue two, which was just released this past week, focuses in on the Human Torch. Although misleading because Wolverine is actually dead. They killed off all the big characters in the Ultimate yeah. line. Well, <laughs> that's the thing about Ultimate <laughs> X-Men. Mm -hmm. I originally was not planning when they announced this whole Ultimate launch to read Ultimate X-Men. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a, I, always been a fan of Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, in fact, before we started doing these podcasts, and now I'm reading 8 million superhero comics every week, <laughs> uh, Ultimate Spider-Man was one of the few superhero comics I did read. Mm -hmm. I didn't really follow a lot of the Ultimate the rest of the line real closely. Um, so I planned to read the new Ultimate Spider-Man. I planned to pick up Ultimates because of Hickman, mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't necessarily planning on reading Ultimate Spider-Man. But it kind of won me over in the Ultimate Fallout miniseries that set all this stuff up. Um, because Nick Spencer, who is the writer here, uh, Paco Medina does the artwork, uh, Spencer's approach... First of all, he's a really good writer. Mm -hmm. Really solid writing. Um, very character-focused. Um, his approach seems so unusual. Um, because there, at this point, is not really a team that calls themselves the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Um... Most of the characters that most people associate with the X-Men have been killed off. Mm -hmm. Professor X mm -hmm. is dead and gone, and there's nobody really carrying on the dream of, of the X-Men. Wolverine is dead. <laughs> um, so this really shows what you can do in the Ultimate Universe. Yes. <laughs> They're not going to kill off Wolverine in the regular world. <laughs> or they probably have killed off a few times, but yeah. you know it'll never last yeah, for exactly. more than a few issues. Um, so... Yeah, I was just like, what is this comic going to be about? <laughs> um, so, it basically centers around two things. or There's, there's kind of two big ideas that kind of set the stage for the world that this comic book takes place in. Um, the first is that, basically in the Ultimate Universe, being a mutant is illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and... The U.S. government has basically said, because Magneto did this big, horrible thing where he flooded New York and everything. and that mm -hmm. you know, that A lot was, of people died. That was in all the mm -hmm. Ultimate books. Um, so after this big disaster where all these people died, um, the government basically said, it's illegal to be a mutant. Um, mutants need to register with the government and be confined to basically internment camps. Mm -hmm. um, and if they put up any resistance to that, um, the authorities are legally authorized to use lethal force against them. So it is admittedly kind of an absurd premise. I mean, I don't really... It's a little far-fetched for me to believe that... I mean, if you can imagine that mutants existed in the world, that the U.S. government would react to it in that way. But if you can accept that premise... It makes for a kind of cool story. The other side of that is that it was recently revealed, again in this Ultimate Fallout miniseries, that the United States government was, in fact, the ones responsible for creating mutants. Uh, so, as before, we had previously thought that this was just a natural pro product of evolution, that people would be born with superpowers and they would be a minority known as mutants. Uh, now we find out that that was all uh, manufactured uh, by some shadowy branch of the government um, years and years ago. So this has now come out into the public light. Uh, so there are riots in the streets and mutants are questioning what is our place in the world. The X-Men are no more. So it is a very volatile uh, situation going on for the mutants here in the <laughs> Ultimate Universe. Um, so this is a very strange and dark book. Mm -hmm. uh, this is definitely the darkest uh, of all the Ultimate books. Um, the opening scene in the first issue is particularly gruesome. Um, so, given that, uh, who are the characters in this book? The book is sort of jumps around a little bit, so mm -hmm. we see some of what's going on with some of the former X-Men, Jean Grey... Um, Colossus and Storm are in an internment camp. Jean Grey is part of um, Ultimate X, the covert uh, team of mutants that Nick Fury uh, has under his command. Um, primarily, this book focuses in on 
Kitty Pride, Iceman, Human Torch, who is sort of um, an honorary mutant. He's yeah. not a mutant, but he's hanging out with the mutants. And they had lived with Peter Parker and yep. Ultimate Spider-Man for a time, those three together. Yeah. Um, so these yeah. three young mutants mm -hmm. are kind of holed up in the former Morlock tunnels. And initially, uh, their intention is to not be superheroes, to not be X-Men, basically just to hide out and survive. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that the new Wolverine, because uh, you got to have a Wolverine, uh, will eventually be part of that group, it seems like, because he's on the cover. Uh, and in the, in the book, it's revealed that this is Wolverine's teenage son. Apparently Wolverine has a teenage son. <laughs> um, uh, but he is not in the story. He hasn't yet become Wolverine, but obviously he will, and he'll be wearing that costume and everything. So, uh, so, so that's the main characters are these are Kitty Pride, Torch, and Iceman, uh, who initially are reluctant to be superheroes and are just basically kind of in hiding, but are drawn into a superhero situation when Rogue is attacked by a group of Nimrod Sentinels. And the uh, young heroes feel morally obligated to help her out. So they get in a good old-fashioned superhero fight. And uh, they, they rescue Rogue from this situation at the end. And uh, there's a lot of other weird stuff going on, too. Uh, so I guess we don't want to give too much away. Mm -hmm. But um, so you like this a lot. We already know. I like this a lot as well. Um, I... I think it's, um, and I like it kind of for what I what I thought I would. I like that I don't really know where they're going to go with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I like that, um, you know, we've seen the reluctant hero before. Spider-Man is a reluctant hero. But these guys are really reluctant heroes, <laughs> especially Kitty Pride. Um, that I wonder, you know, how is this book going to get to the point where it's actually about characters who stand up and say, we are the X-Men. Because right now they seem to have no interest in, in Xavier's kind of mission or anything like that it's just really about basic survival at yeah. this point and obviously there's foreshadowing you you kind of hear the story through kitty pride's voice yep kitty and pride is the main I, character yeah. probably a reason you liked it a lot well i do love kitty pride, yeah but <laughs> i also know this book is going to be focusing mostly on kitty pride and rogue oh okay so rogue's gonna be yeah. a big part of it um but kitty pride basically like says that she is going to be like the um biggest terrorist in the world pretty much um, yeah. So she's going to be a hated it, person. Yeah. Which is uh, obviously a contrast from the a very likable, lovable yeah, character. Yeah, she's in kind the of a, she's universe. a bit of a prickly bitch in in these crystal witches. I mean, yeah, not bad. <laughs> I mean, understandably. Yeah. But she is like she is very vehement. Like it, it's the Human Torch and Iceman who want to go out and help Rogue. Like she is very reluctant to do anything that even resembles. Uh, being yeah. a superhero. Yeah, she wants to hunker down, man. avoid those, like, camps. Which is and... totally what I would be doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and we've got Stryker um, as a kind of a main villain behind the scenes who looks like is... See, a lot has went on in the Ultimate Universe that I'm unaware of, but he's mm -hmm. some sort of, like, human-sentinel hybrid. So... Yeah. It's a cool book. Yeah. Like, really and cool art. And the thing is, like, I really like the Days of Future Past stuff that they yeah, had man. in the regular Marvel Universe. And they, you call, even, they use a lot of that You in don't even book. need Days of Future Past. Yeah, this is like universe. Days of Future Past. Like, like this is the future that they're afraid right of. Right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of describing exactly. it. That's a good way of describing it. Because they're always uh, that's always going to be, like, far away in the future, or even yep. the recent future in the Marvel Universe. But here, they pretty much did it. They're the mutant camps. Storm and Colossus are in them. Um, you know, class is being tortured, Storm's just confined, um, mutants are in hiding, it's illegal, that registration act is in place, sentinels are after them, shoot to kill, even the Nimrod guys like Bishop yeah. that like was trying to stop from happening, yeah, that, I mean, it's all there. Well, I should have let you review this <laughs> one, because that, <laughs> yeah, that is a cool. much more succinct way of describing that idea. Yes, that's basically what's happened, the, the nightmare scenario that's always hinted at in the regular Marvel Universe, but that can never really come to pass, because mm -hmm. they have to keep the Marvel Universe going has essentially happened. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my minor caveat would be, does that really fit in with a world where the Ultimates are accepted, where Spider-Man is accepted? Eh, maybe not really, but who cares? It's like a cool story, cool art. I like that the Human Torch is a part of it. Iceman is a funny character. It's an otherwise very dark world. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the new Wolverine. It's great. <laughs> Come on, great. man. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, these new Ultimate books were fantastic. Yeah. I liked all of them. Did you? 
Yeah, I mean, you didn't like Ultimates or Hawkeye as much. I mean, I liked I liked Ultimates, and you kind of sold me on it a little bit as you were talking about it. Hawkeye, I, thought it was I still wouldn't read any more Hawkeye. I mean, Hawkeye again. <laughs> okay, Hawkeye is probably the weakest, but it's a, it's a, it's a mini series. I mm-hmm. mean, what I yeah. what I've always liked and what I like now about the Ultimate books, it is that they do keep it really focused. They don't, you know, overdo it. There there were only ever four Ultimate ongoing books, I think. You know, Fantastic Four they had at one point as, mm-hmm. as, as well as the other three. Yeah. So now there's only three ongoing books. They'll have occasional miniseries like Hawkeye. They have really good writers and artists doing the books. I love that those writers and artists get to do their own spins on the characters. You know, like, I want to see what... Um, Hickman's version of the Avengers looks like. I want to see what um, you know Brian Bendis's version of Spider Man looks like because I respect them as creators. You know, and I mean I like that they're given this kind of blank canvas with seemingly no limits. Um, so yeah, I mean obviously <laughs> there's a lot of these uh, relaunches and new number ones out there right now. So don't overlook the this Ultimate relaunch. Mm-hmm. I think these are all great superhero yeah. books. Yeah, Just especially Spider Man and X Men. I would say, yeah, <laughs> Spider Man and X Men. I think are clearly like ahead of the rest. For me, Ultimates is yeah, good. Right. Too. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> right, say, check them all out. I guess I was gonna say for sure, Ultimate Spider Man was my favorite. Yeah, but then I read the second issue of Ultimates, and I was like, oh, damn, dude. Yeah, <laughs> They're like cool. So whatever, I don't care. You know, it. This, these are awesome comics. I don't understand people who don't like comics. <laughs> but I, I mean, can't, I can't speak just, to them. Well, I have to say, I just on a personal note, one thing that's come out of this doing this podcast is that I'm reading a lot more mainstream superhero comics than I usually do. People who read my stuff at Articular Nerd when I ever update it, um, it tends to be like more alternative stuff. So I don't I haven't read a lot of superhero stuff. Um, but this podcast has given me the opportunity yeah, to read a lot of... Six months ago, you were saying, like, what are the good superhero books? Like, where are the good superhero books? What are they? Like, I I don't think there are any good superhero yeah. books out there. And now you're reading a lot of them, and you're liking a lot of them. I think the quality of mainstream superhero comic books is generally high. Mm-hmm. I really do. There is a lot of good... I mean, if you don't like superheroes, you don't like superheroes. But if you do, if you're open to that idea... There's a lot of great books out there. Mm-hmm. Great, great writing and great art, um, and uh, the the ultimate books are are fantastic. I mean, people support like the good like writers, like Grant Morrison, Ed Brubaker. Yeah, well, that's Michael the other Bendis, thing about the ultimate so. thing I want to say. It's very writer driven. It seems like mm-hmm. great yeah. artists on here, but it seems like their mm-hmm. writers are really the ones that have the visions for these books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say so too. So. Um, but yeah, I feel like the quality is high because fans are demanding it. They're following and rewarding writers who give them good material. So there kind of isn't a room for, like, you know, these kind of, like, mediocre writers anymore, and they just kind of fall by the wayside. And, I mean, DC was very aggressive with getting, like, top talent on their books. Well, I'm and not obvi- aggressive enough on some of those Well, some ones. of them, sure. <laughs> um, and obviously the ultimate line, they pulled their big, like, up-and-coming writer, Jonathan Hickman, to kind of oversee this um, whole line relaunch. Um, and obviously Brian Michael Bendis has been a very steady, solid writer throughout and he's a part of it. And Nick Spencer, they recruited And Nick too. Spencer is the up and coming. I mean, he's done some great stuff. Yep. Morning um, Glories has been a recent big thing. Yep, and, and he's not quite, doesn't have the level of nerd recognition yet that uh, Bendis and Hickman have. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think he probably will very soon mm-hmm. based on uh, Ultimate X-Men. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very exciting time to be a superhero fan. <laughs> yep, so stop listening to this podcast and go check out these books. They were fantastic. All right, I think that's it for this week then. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week with um, something else. All right, see you next time. (laughs) All right, bye. bye.